Hi there, I'm Teaspoon, and this is Taspoon, the series where I pioneer my own path progressing an old school RuneScape Iron Man account. The goal? To complete the collection log. The catch? I have to do it one randomly generated task at a time. Welcome to Taspoon. In the last episode, we did a bit of an easy clue grind for a clue unique task, followed by getting 43 prayer, which enabled us to do monkey madness, which we completed and bought a dragon scimitar. And in between that episode and this episode, I used that dragon scimitar to kill many, many crabs, getting 65 attack and strength, allowing us to enter the warrior's guild. Unfortunately, I had my mic muted for my reaction. I just didn't notice when I went to record, but yeah, 65 attack and strength. That took a very long time, but I'm glad I did it. Uh, as I, I might have showed the clip, I might not have, but I'll show it right now. Killed 2,657 crabs in total. That's the 420 I did the first time, and then the 1,300 update, and then, you know, 1,300 more on top of that. So, I was hitting crabs for a while, but... We've done it. 65 attack and strength. I can get into the Warriors Guild. Hard task in the Falador area. Awesome. Uh, I've bought a Mithril Full Helm and Mithril Plate Legs, so I can use the Mithril Animated Armor over here, just like that guy. Get some tokens, go and kill some Cyclopses, get a Defender. Everything will be great. So, here's what I'm going to be doing. I'm using my own mithril plate body because I couldn't afford a second one. Putting it on the thing, guy comes out, and I'm going to have to prayer flick my protect from melee because I don't have any prayer potions, and this guy will absolutely rinse me if I let him hit me. So, yeah, back in prayer flicking hell for a while, but that's fine. It's pretty easy. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty comfortable prayer flicking now, so, yeah. I realized that, I don't think it really explained what's going on, so... The Warrior's Guild has the Cyclopses, which drop the Defenders, but in order to spend time in the room with the Cyclopses, you need to spend Warrior's Guild tokens, which you get from doing activities around the Warrior's Guild, including killing these animated armor. As you can see, I got 25 Warrior Guild tokens. Uh, each, to each 10 tokens is one minute inside the thing, I think is how it works. So, uh, I'm gonna need a lot of them. Because I'm going to need to kill a lot of Cyclopses, so... I don't know how many I'm going to do batches of, but... Yeah, I'll be I'll be here for a while. Alright, I have acquired 600 tokens. Actually, I accidentally got 625, but whatever. So that is just over an hour of killing Cyclopses. I'm going to go and see if I can get a Defender in that hour. Hey, I got a Defender! That actually didn't take very long at all. Very happy with that. Um, yeah, gonna use the rest of the tokens, see how many I can get. I just noticed I never reset my recorder, so I was showing the XP tracker the whole time. But, fix that. Going back in, Bronze Defender. Let's get an Iron one. Oh yeah, another Defender. I'm actually getting pretty lucky. I forget the exact drop rate, but I am well under it, so I'm very happy with that. I'll, I'll check in a sec here, but yeah, very happy. The defenders are 1 in 50 from the Cyclopses, and I have gotten 2 defender drops in 49 kills. So, almost exactly twice the, or half the drop rate, I guess. So, very lucky, very happy. Let's keep it going. Another nice thing about the Cyclopses is they actually are, like, the first thing that drop things that I can actually elk for money. For example, this Adamant 2H elks for, like, 4k, which, uh, the 6,000 coins that I have on me, I'm pretty sure that is my entire cash stack. So, extra money in elks, very much appreciated. Yay, Steel Defender. Uh, this one took a little bit longer than the last few, uh, I think that one- actually that one took 52 kills, exactly, so that was right on drop rate, so that's fine. But the other- I got much luckier in the other two, that's for sure. But, still very happy with that. Uh, I, you need 100 tokens to actually go in there, just as a baseline, so I actually can't go back in right now, I need to go get more. But, three defenders in the first hour? Pretty good. I'm very happy with that. 
my first kill back in the Cyclops room, and I get a Black Defender. Heck yeah. And then, like, four kills later, I got a Mithril Defender. This is going suspiciously well, but I will not complain. Thank you, Mr. Cyclops Man. Okay, there is no shot. That was my second kill back in the room. I, I don't even know what to say. This is insane. It's supposed to be a 1 in 50. I've killed uh, 108, and I have 6 defender drops. What the heck? Just uh, to show how insanely lucky this is. Yeah, there it is. 108 kills, 6 defenders. What the heck? Hey, I'm so good at RuneScape. What the heck? Uh, let me just run out here and pull up my kill count. Yeah, 139. That is absolutely insane. That's uh, I I don't I almost feel bad. I feel a little icky just having been that lucky. But yeah, task done. I did not think we'd be back here already, but here we are. Completing the task. Feels good, man. Generating a new one. Black Satchel. Easy clap. So, much like the green satchel, the black satchel is from the creature creation activity in the basement of the Tower of Life. We have to make sword chicks. The sword chicks are a raw chicken and a raw swordfish. And they drop the black satchel fairly commonly, one in one in 6.6. .6. So it should be really easy once I can kill them. The problem is the raw swordfish. Uh, I actually don't have. Let me just switch over to my game again. I don't have any raw swordfish, and I'm only level 27 fishing, which means that I'm quite some way away from being able to catch swordfish. So. Yeah, I guess I get to train my fishing for the task. That's not bad. So, here we are, into the fishing spot. Just gonna catch all the trout, cut a tree, light on fire, cook the trout, drop the trout, repeat. And yeah, that that's about it. So I realize now that cooking isn't technically part of the task. I just need the raw swordfish, so. I should only be fishing them, and then, you know, I could bank them and cook them later, but I don't really want to bother doing that. It's faster for me to cook them and drop them here than it would be for me to bank them to cook them later. So, I'm doing the faster thing, technically. Uh, I don't know. It's my series. I make the rules. If you have a problem with it, I don't care. This really has been a nice change of pace for my last few tasks, or at least the last few things I've been doing, which were a lot of melee, a lot of prayer flicking, a lot of needing to pay attention. This is nice. I've just, you know, click the thing, go AFK, get a bunch of fish. It's awesome. And I figured it'd be a good time for me to talk about sort of what my plan is going forward on a few things, because there's a few things I've been thinking about that I haven't addressed yet. So here they are. Farming and to an extent, Hunter, and a couple other things. So, first of all, Farming and Hunter, why are those two skills related? Um, both those skills, a lot of people train very passively. You know, they, they plant their crops, and they, they do their farm runs every once in a while, or for Hunter, they do their birdhouse runs. And I will be allowing myself to do those things, even if they don't relate to my task. Just because there's really no sense if I end up getting a farming task or, you know, something that I need to have a high farming level or hunter level and I, I just have to wait while farming. I mean, I, you know, I can go do tithe farm and I, I probably will if that ends up being the case, but it doesn't really make sense to limit myself to not allowed to do time-based tasks. So what I'll end up doing is once I get a task that involves farming, that's sort of when I'm going to start my farming grind. And I'm, you know, I'm obviously going to pay more attention during that little period of time where I need to do it for the task. But from then on, I'm going to allow myself to just do farm runs, do trees, tree runs, whatever. Same with Hunter. Once I get another task that needs my Hunter level, I'm going to start my birdhouse runs. And I'm just going to do them. The birdhouse runs also relate to... Uh, there's one item in the collection log. I actually don't know where it is. I wonder if I can find it. Um... 
that is the evil chicken outfit. Yes, the evil chicken head, wings, legs, feet. Uh, these are extremely rare from something that is extremely rare. So, you have to get a god egg from a bird's nest, use the bird's nest on a shrine, and then you have a chance to get them. Getting the god egg is already somewhat rare, and then using it and getting the item is extremely rare. So, if I don't start doing my birdhouse runs now, I don't think I'll ever get any pieces of that, let alone all four. So, birdhouse runs, farm runs, are gonna be okay. The other thing that I wanted to address is Slayer. Uh, next time that I get a task similar to the one that I just got, where I need to do a lot of combat, I will allow myself to do the combat training through Slayer. There's really no reason not to. Slayer's gonna take a long time either way. There's no point waiting for a Slayer task when I could just be doing two of the things at once. So, in the future, I probably will end up doing Slayer. The only reason I did Crabs this time was because I needed to AFK a lot. I was editing the last video, editing the video itself, and couldn't really do Slayer while doing the editing, so it was kind of a two-in-one. So I might switch between those, but I will be allowing myself to do stuff like that for Slayer, Farming, and Hunter. And there might be a few other exceptions that I'm not really thinking of right now. But yeah, that, that's sort of where I'm thinking. Those are sort of the things where it's like, I kind of have to do them over time, but I, I don't want to wait for a task because then I'll have to grind it out. And yeah. And as far as progress goes here, because it has been a couple hours, uh, I'm at 41 fishing, 40 cooking. So should be another couple hours, but you guys probably won't see any of that. So... And after almost five hours of fishing, we have acquired 50 fishing. Let's go get a swordfish. All right, here we are back at the basement Tower of Life. I got 13 sword chick spawns ready to go. Hopefully I get it. Uh, I have a few more in the bank if I don't get it. Unfortunately, these things just drop feathers, which is like, whatever. Um, but yeah, I'll let you know if I get anything. Okay, I got on the first try. Cool. And in case you thought for some reason that I was lying, uh, there you go. One sword chick slain. So that's kind of nice. I'm glad I'm on the incredibly lucky train instead of the incredibly unlucky one anymore. But uh, yeah, we're gonna just go on over to this page, press that complete task button. Uh, yeah, so guess we just go for the next. 10% of the easy diary, or easy task. Yes, finally, I've been wanting to get one of these for a long time. Anytime I go anywhere in Zaya, I've been wishing I had one. This is excellent. The Xerix Talisman is the necklace that you use to teleport to different places around Zaya. And you can, these are the five places that you can teleport to, and you get it from either killing lizard men or thieving the stone chest. Uh, I don't have 64 thieving for the stone chest, so I'm just going to be killing the lizard men. And funny enough, the drop rate actually doubles if you've done the Karen and Kebos easy diary, which I have. So one in 125 shouldn't take me too long. Uh, I'll switch over to here. You can see I'm just losing aggro of these guys so they don't all attack me and yeah shouldn't be too bad um i just quickly got the five percent that you need to fight these guys in the first place i was just healing the soldiers figured that was kind of boring didn't want to show you that but yeah oh i didn't have my recorder on but I got the thing! Yay! And through my killing of the lizard men to get the talisman, I actually got 30 fangs, so I already have 30 teleports for it, which is awesome. That might take the record for the new fastest task, which is good to see. 11%, generate a new task, Void Knight Seal. It's actually kind of lame, but it'll be quick. Here I am at the pest control. I can go in the intermediate boat because I'm actually 76 combat. So that's nice. Uh, yeah, it's pest control. I mean, it's not interesting, but hey, here I am. 
So, I got 4 points per game on the Intermediate Boat. I need 10 points for the Void Knight Seal. Not much to it. Gonna go play 2 more games of Pest Control. <laughs> Alright. With that game done, I believe I have enough points to buy myself the Void Knight Seal. So let's go and do that. Void Knight Seal, confirm. Drop that. No, I'm just kidding. I mean, it is essentially useless, but... We're done! Yay! That may have broken the record for the fastest task so far. Get that completed and generate a new task. Rune's Hatchel. Great. I don't know what I have to kill for this, but it can't be too hard. Alright, now this might be the fastest task yet. I didn't have to get any of the materials, I just had them already. We get to kill these little bastards, which are just the most adorable creatures in the game. And I'm gonna get on the first drop. Okay, I didn't, but... Yeah, this is probably gonna take the take the cake for the new fastest task, I have to... I have to assume. They're like <laughs> level 18, 1 in 6 drop, this should take no time at all. Hey, there it is. Yep, yeah, took me 11 kills. Pretty easy. I am cruising today. Complete that task, 12%. Generate a new one. Desert Easy Diary. That's actually nice. That should be good. I like that. So, if we go on over to the wiki, check out the Desert Diary. You can see I actually have all the skill requirements because there's barely any. But I haven't done Gertrude's Cat. And this is a really important quest to get done sooner rather than later in an account. And you can start growing cats. And then once you have a fully grown cat, you can trade it in in Ardune for 200 death runes. Which is big. Death runes actually become very important the later you get in an account. So once you start farming cats, that's a good thing. So getting this out of the way is amazing. Uh, I also need to start... Ixlorin's little helper, I'm sorry, I don't think anyone knows how to pronounce that, but yeah, uh, the desert tasks themselves are pretty easy, I think, I mean, I haven't really looked through them, but it's an easy diary, it can't be that hard, but first things first, I'm gonna go do Gertrude's cat, and then we'll see you where we're at. Gertrude's cat has been completed. I now have a kitten. So, the way the kitten works is it takes three hours to grow up. The kitten has to be out and following you for it to actually count. And you need to pet it once every 35-ish minutes. And you need to feed it once every 30-ish minutes. Um, what you have to feed it is any raw fish. Now, the little trick, which is why I'm here, is that... These raw carambuanges count as a raw fish, but they are stackable in your inventory. So every time that I have a kitten following me around, I will have a stack of carambuanges in my inventory to feed it. And that way I don't have to worry about actual raw fish kind of clogging up my inventory doing stuff. It just takes one inventory slot and then I can have my kitten following me everywhere. And yeah, I'm going to sit here and fish like a shitload of these. They're really fast. As you can see, you get like 11 at a time. So... Shouldn't take too long, but that's that's the little trick I'm going to use. The other trick to fishing these is once you get a full inventory of raw shrimp, it'll only give you the carambuangi, whereas if you have empty spaces, it's like a 50-50 if you get a shrimp or a carambuangi, so make sure you leave all the shrimp in your inventory while you're fishing them, and you'll get them very, very quickly, as you can see in the chat box. Uh, yeah. Alright, I think that's enough of those. We can go ahead and start the Desert Diary. I think I have all the requirements. Doing a quick check. Yep. Oh, well, other than started Iklern's Little Helper, which I can do while I'm in the desert. So, yeah, let's go and do it. One thing you can do if you're using Runelight is go to the Quest Helper and put in the Desert Easy Diary or whatever your diary you're trying to do. And if you click this little button up here, it sorts your bank into all the tasks and it shows you all the items that you need. So it makes it really easy to just grab out everything that you need and go and do the diary, which is what I'm going to do. Here we are at the Shantae Pass. 
Gonna go ahead and do the diary. Probably not gonna commentate much of it because it's not that interesting. We are back at the Shanty Pass. Talk to this guy. Bada bing, bada boom. Get my amulet. Got an antique lamp. I didn't think about what I'm gonna use this on yet. Uh, I guess just prayer again. And yeah, we're done. I feel like we've seen this screen a lot this episode, which feels good. Complete that task up to 13%, and we will generate a new one. Five more uniques from Easy Clues. Awesome. I've already got 12 easy caskets from when I was killing all those crabs, so I might just be done. Uh, I might just click these until I'm done. Let's 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 start. Let's do it. Uh, well, there's one. Nice. Neither of those. Neither of those. Uh, none of those. None of those. Okay, I take it back. Uh, none of those. Okay, wait. This is bad. Wait. Oh, there's another one. That's two. Uh, wow, got the full free-to-play starter kit. Uh, 15,000 coins? I didn't know that was possible from an easy clue, but <laughs> I'm poor, so I'll actually take that. Uh, let me just go ahead and deposit some of this stuff. Make room in here. And none of those. Okay, I, oh, that's another one. Uh, let's go ahead and... <laughs> Check what that's done for us. So I need this to be a total of 10, and I'm at eight. So two more, not too bad. Actually, wait, I have one more casket. I forgot I was gonna leave that as a placeholder, and nothing, okay, yeah. So two more uniques. Uh, I guess I'll go back to Puro Puro and start hunting gourmet implings for some more easy clues. But yeah, that's, that's a very solid start. I got an easy clue here that requires me to wear studded chaps that you actually need 20 range for. I only have level 5, so I get to train my range up a little bit, which is nice. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to do it yet, but probably just going to hit some guards or something. But yeah, that's kind of nice. I finally get to train some range. This also gives me another chance to talk a little bit. Uh, there was one more thing I wanted to talk about, which was how the series is going as a whole. Uh, I've learned a lot about video editing. I've learned a lot about the way YouTube works. You know, I, I've, I've even learned about RuneScape. Like, this series has been an amazing learning experience for me, and I wanted to try something. One thing I've noticed is the videos do significantly better view-wise if they get a good amount of likes and or comments to view ratio uh, especially early, like soon after I post them. And I know it's hard to actually get people on YouTube to press the like button or leave a comment because it's so much easier not to. You know, they, there's no real reason for them to, which I completely understand. But I was kind of hoping I could find some way to incentivize people to like and or comment on the video. So here's my plan. You can do this thing in Runelight where you mark tiles, and you might have seen this before. Uh, I just have it set to yellow, pretty basic, little square. What you can also do is label them to say, you know, whatever you want, and it'll put it on the screen there. What I want to try and do is essentially incentivize people to like the video and comment on the video by giving them tiles in-game. <laughs> so. If you like the video and leave a comment with a message that you want me to put in a tile, and actually you can also change the color, uh, which I am willing to do if you want to specify a color that you want, and I will mark the tile and put your message in the tile and then it will be there forever. So if that's something you want to do, uh, one, it's kind of fun, you know, it lets you guys be impactful in the game, and two, it helps me get my videos more impressions by having more likes and comments. So I figured this is a win-win. Again, you don't have to, but it could be kind of fun. Obviously, there'll have to be some limitations to this whole tile plan, such as you can't have any swearing or, you know, generally rude messages because I don't want those in the video. And 
to, uh, you know, I'll, I'll try my best to put it where you want it. You can try and give me an exact tile or just a general area. For example, you could say at the Lumbridge teleport spot. And then every time I teleport to Lumbridge, it'll be there or, you know, whatever. Or you can try and say this specific tile and I'll do my best. And number three is probably going to be a length rule. Uh, preferably that they are rather short. Uh, as you can see, if I mark a tile and go to label it, uh, you know, you can't really fit that long of a message in, in the little tiles, so relatively short, not rude, and give me a general area, and I will put your tile down in the game. But yeah, back to the game. I got 20 range. Gonna do the easy clue. And this might be the casket. Talk to Yuri. It's not. Cool. And there we go, got the casket, gonna open it right away. I need two more uniques, and I didn't get any. Satch. Another Satch. And another Satch. All right, game, just give me one unique from the casket. Nice, thank you, game, <laughs> you listened for once. All right, another casket here. I just need one more unique, so let's get it done right now. This is the last time I just had to ask nicely and the game gave me a unique, so... Game, can I please have another unique? Well... <laughs> I mean... <laughs> doesn't count to the easy log. I guess it still listened. I can't be that mad, but I'm still at nine there. That's on the shared tab, so... Alright, we'll do more. Alright, another casket. Give me an easy clue, unique, please, game. And that counts? Wait a minute. Isn't that really rare? Uh, no, it's about the same as all the other uniques. Okay, well, we did it! Yay! Alright, and we're completing another task. This is crazy. Alright. Still 13% and generate a new one. Unlock bones. Ah, oh, more mage training arena. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, I don't have any money. I need to buy runes. I've alked everything I can find that alks for any amount of money. And I'm still poor. So, yeah. This seems to be a running theme of this account. I'm just poor all the time. And I'm sad about it. So I think I'm going to go and steal some more nature runes while I am watching something and then I'll figure out what I want to do from there. And I, I mean, I need the nature runes for the maid training rune anyway, so yeah. I feel like this account spends a lot of time here at the nature rune chest, but you know what? That's fine. I'm okay with this. <laughs> So there's this handy page on the uh, OSR's wiki about pizzazz points, and it shows how many runes per point that you need. So I can do some simple math and come back with how many runes I'm going to be aiming for before I go over there. Um, it's going to be a lot more than last time, that's for sure, and I don't know how long I'm going to have to be here to get enough money to buy all the runes, but I guess that's a problem for future me. For now, I'll do some math and come back. All right, I have been clicking this chest once every nine seconds for four hours, so that's really fun. I have 1,100 nature runes, which should be over enough for what I need for May Training Arena, and it'll leave me with a few to use for myself. Now, I need to find out how much the rest of the runes are going to cost me, and therefore, how much more money I need to make. Alright, I've done the math. I'm going to need just about 94k to buy all the runes that I need. And I do not have that, so I will be back when I know what moneymaker I'm going to do. I'm, I'm really not sure. I don't want to click more nature rune chests. I don't know. We'll figure it out. So I decided to play a game of Soul Wars and buy a Spoils of War. I believe I'm allowed to do this. Uh, the Spoils of War isn't on the Soul Wars collection log slot, unless it's somewhere else that, like, I couldn't find it. Um, I believe I'm allowed to do this. I don't think this will give me a collection log pop-up. I don't think it's on the, the task generator, so I'm going to do it and hope for the best. 
and I was right. That is nice, and now I'm going to open it and hopefully get either just straight money or something I can alk or sell or something. So, here we go. That's not the best, but not the worst? Uh, okay, no, it's, it's, it's pretty bad for me. Um, okay, I might go and play a couple more games and see what I can get. <laughs> I got the raw swordfish, though, it's funny. I needed that last episode, okay, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah okay, I'll be back. Alright, I have won another game of Soul Wars, and therefore can buy, I can actually get two Soul Wars now. So, I'm going to do that, and hope for some better luck here. Uh, that's terrible. That's the opposite of what I was hoping for. And then I lag, and then... Uh, okay. Alright, we'll see what I can do. Alright. Didn't do as well that game, but I have enough for one more. So, let's hope for some alkables. That's actually very good. I can sell the death runes, and I can sell the extra natures. That might be enough. Maybe I'm being optimistic. Uh, I don't know. I'll have to do some math, but that's pretty good. So I managed to sell off all the runes and the arrows and whatnot, and I got myself 1100 natures, which is exactly sort of the minimum that I thought that I might need. 350 laws, again, also the exact minimum. The cosmics, on the other hand, doesn't really give me an exact number of how many runes per points that I'm going to need. I guessed around 550, but I'm out of money at 485, so I'm going to go there. I'm just going to try, and if I don't have enough, then I'll have to come back. But yeah, that's my plan. going to go in with this and see how far I make it. So I've been doing this telekinetic room for, I don't know, over an hour now. And got a little unlucky with the rooms. The puzzles can vary on how many uh, casts they take to complete. And yeah, got a little bit unlucky, so my math is a bit off. I'll need like, I don't know, 10 more nature runes, honestly. Um, but yeah, I'll come back there in a bit. I'm going to move on to a different room. Don't know which one yet. Finished the alchemy room. I also got sort of unlucky with the free cast. I believe my math said I should be at about 200 nats left, so I may have to go and get some more of those too, so that's, yeah, whatever, I'll do it later. So apparently I way over guessed on the amount of cosmic runes that I'd need. Uh, I guess that's fine, you know, I'll need them in the future for making jewelry, but I'm still poor, so gotta go buy my laws and natures, because I don't think I'll have enough for the graveyard room. Went and bought some more law runes, themed some nature runes, came back here, finished the telekinetic room, now I'm going to go do graveyard room and go and buy the bones to peaches. I will say, getting bones to peaches before getting some of the infinity tasks is actually going to be a good thing. Uh, usually people use bones to peaches in this room so they can eat the peaches to stay alive. Uh, right now the bananas just aren't cutting it, so I'm ringing in a few cakes, eating the cakes, and then when I get low I'm just going back, healing to full on cakes in the PvP arena, and then bringing some more in with me. Uh, but having Bones to Peaches at, uh, for any future grinds here will actually be really nice, so I think it's the best one to get first compared to like one of the Infinity pieces, although it would've been really cool to get the Infinity hat, because I love the hat, it's such a big fashion scape item, but yeah, this is what I'm doing, just getting super low and then running back and healing up and coming back. I'm actually, I'm almost done already. This didn't take too long. I just did it last night and this is the next morning. So yeah, I'll let you know when I'm done. And I believe with that, we are done the graveyard room. But not only that, I believe we are done everything. Sure with my hat. Oh, let's skip through it, but it looked good. Let's just go up there and see. Bones to peaches. Confirm. Heck yeah. It's weird that it counts as an item, even though you don't get an item, but... Yay, we did it! And let's go on over and complete that on the spreadsheet. Complete that, there you go, 14%. Generate a new task. Money from Temporos. Okay, cool. Yeah. 